At some point, I was paid by the Israeli government, by the U.S. government, by the Palestinian Authority, and by Hamas organization. I was working for all those guys at the same time. So today, if I speak, I speak with the authority of experience. It's not from the books. It's not a second-hand knowledge that I got from somebody. I don't represent government or politicians. I represent myself. I am an individual. I am not an organization. And I don't like to take sides, because I don't belong to nations. I don't belong to the crowd. I have transcended this long time ago. But the Jewish nation is dear to me. And when I see nations unifying against the Jewish people, it hurts me. Because at some point, I thought the Jewish people were the enemies of humanity. I thought that they were the enemies of our people, the Palestinian people, until I came to experience what the Jewish nation really is through intelligence service, through witnessing the true democratic model in an ocean of darkness, the only light in the Middle East. And I wonder, people here in the free world who think that they are free, unifying against Israel, attacking Israel, isolating Israel, boycotting Israel, BDS and all this hypocrisy. Of course, hypocrisy coming together with political correctness, because it's the same. Two faces for the same coin. In the Muslim society, I witnessed a woman who sent five of her children to die in suicide bombing attacks, one after another. She would put this explosive belt on them and bless them and say, go kill the Jews. To gain respect in her society. This is hypocrisy. My father disowned me because he's a hypocrite. On a personal level, he's a loving father. But when he puts the Hamas mask that he cannot exist without, he's a monster, he's something else. And this is the problem with that society conditioning, that if you take individuals on the side, they're just human beings like us. Any of us could have uh, or have been brought in that environment would be conditioned in the same way. The human condition does not differentiate between an Arab or a Jewish person. But the collective mind of the society is representing something. It's representing an ideology, a culture, a state of consciousness that calibrates in darkness, that calibrates in the seventh and sixth centuries. Ruled by tribal lust for power. It has not changed, or it has not changed. Muhammad, and I know that I've been told by people here not to say this, so it does not look like the Jews are going against the Muslims. But we cannot fool ourselves. There is an Islamic problem. Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, ISIS, Boko Haram, all of them are killing by the name of Allah. They're not killing by the name of Jesus. They're not killing by the name of Jehovah. They're not killing by the name of Mahavira or the Buddha or Lao Tzu. They're killing by the name of Allah. There is an Islamic problem, and I think humanity needs to stand against this danger, because this danger is not only against the state of Israel. This danger, thank you, thank you. This danger is against the evolvement of mankind.
political correctness. I don't know if there is uh, any CNN uh, re reporters or repre representatives here tonight. You know, political correctness, when my friend invited me to his wedding and he asked me to wear a tuxedo, and I thought it was a speedo for a second. <laughs> there is a big difference, <laughs> right? That would have been politically incorrect. But when it comes to uh, matters, universal issues, when we see waves of violence and darkness taking over and spreading, and we choose to uh, stick our head in the sand with the name of political correctness, the truth is that we are afraid. And we are trying not to provoke them more. We are trying not to create a religious war. But there has been a religious war, whether you like it or not. The better way is to face it, to grow up, and face it with courage. This is what I say. The problem, the problem is not in the individual. We are not against the Muslim people. I, am not, I cannot be against my mother and my father and my people. They're just people. And there are idiots everywhere in every nation. But I'm talking about the collective consciousness of nations, of regions, and the cosmic consciousness of all humanity. The Muslim people have a problem, and their problem is in their belief system. They have to face it, and we need to encourage them to fight the good fight, as I did. If I was able, you know, I had privileges as the son of a top Hamas leader. I had something to lose. But the average Muslim person don't have lots of things to lose. They're already living in darkness and misery. If they leave it, it's better for them. When I left, I did not leave misery. I left the privilege. I left position. I was paid. I was protected. Everybody wanted me to stay wearing the mask. I am a living example and a challenge, and I will continue to be to every individual who live in the Muslim world, that this is the time to grow up, to destroy the walls, and to transcend the conditioning of the society. This is the only way. But to tell them, no, Islam is a religion of peace, we just create the perfect climate for terrorists to keep on growing. I say otherwise. Our problem is not with the individual. Our problem is with the belief system that humanity and the free world need to unify as eventually, even though it was too late, the world unified against Nazism. Today, free people need to unify against Islam, not against the Muslim people, against Islam itself as a belief system. When the president of the free world stands and say, when the president of the free world stands and says that Islam is a religion of peace, he creates the climate, he provides the climate, the perfect climate to create more terrorism. I hope, I hope that my message does not come across I don't want to create more chaos, but there is no other way, you know. I, sh I wish I could be more gentle to represent this issue. But I've seen death, and I came from hell, and it's very dark. What is the alternative for Israel and for democracy, or for the American Constitution? It's the darkness of the 6th century. This is what's the alternative. You know, I don't believe that there is any system, including the American Constitution, that can solve the human condition or help the individual to integrate to a higher state. I believe this is up to the individual. 
But the difference between the 7th century environment and democracy, that the individual has more room and more peace or peaceful environment to grow. I experienced it myself. When I was in Ramallah, I was only able to practice Islam. I only knew the mosque. But in Tel Aviv, I practiced Christianity. When I was a Muslim also, I practiced Islam in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, where the Jewish people are not allowed to worship at their Temple Mount. <laughs> then, then punch of hypocrites called BDS come and compare Israel to the racist regime of South Afri Africa. How can you compare? If it's the capital of the Jewish people and the Israeli government are not allowing the Jewish people to worship freely in their capital, on their hol holiest site, for political correctness, not to offend the Muslims and give them that kind of freedom. How can we compare this to that? In Tel Aviv, I was able to practice yoga. I was able to practice Christianity. They're Muslims, they're Druze, they're all type of people, all type of religions protected under the Israeli umbrella and the Israeli law. This is not available in the other countries surrounding. If Israel is destroyed or if Israel is isolated, what is the alternative? What those people are doing, I really don't understand. I know that I came across pro-Israeli this afternoon, but it has been a privilege. Why not? I love Israel. I love what Israel stands for, its ethics, its values, its democracy, its love. A nation that was able to overcome the Holocaust and instead of playing the victim mentality and blame everyone for their suffering, they were able to build a state, a democratic state, make it from a newborn state to an advanced and completely developed state in less than 25 years. This is a great example. It has been a pleasure. I appreciate the love of the Jewish nation everywhere in the world. I don't care what they label me. Again, I speak with the authority of experience. If they have anything to say, they can say it right to my face. If they have the courage, but I doubt. I would like to conclude with another joke, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, I take the advantage, and this is a Jew Jewish crowd. Let's make a joke about Jewish people. <laughs> so this Jewish guy, and also a Muslim guy, the first guy, the Jewish, fell off a cliff. And luckily, there was actually vice versa. The Muslim guy fell, and there was a branch, and he was hanging on the branch. And he was screaming to God, God, help me. Then he heard a voice from the cloud coming, and he said, Son, let go. Just let go. Trust me. And he let go. The guy fell. His bones were destroyed. And God said to him, You idiot, you shouldn't listen to me. Next time. You learned your lesson. And a Jewish guy fell and he was hanging on the branch. And he said, God, help me. And he heard the voice, son, let go. Trust me. Just let go. And the Jewish guy screamed back and said, help. Is there any, anyone else up there? This tells us maybe the difference. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. God bless Israel. Thank you very much.